Welcome back to Build Theory. In this series, I am putting a 12-valve Cummins in a Ford Explorer. In the last episode, I purchased and disassembled a transfer case. However, the transfer case did not fit on my transmission due to an incorrect input shaft. In this episode, I will replace and machine a new input shaft as well as reassembling the case. Enjoy! So as you can see, I've still got this taken apart because I was waiting on this input shaft here, which we replaced with this new input shaft here. You can see the difference between them. It's just the number of splines. It's the only difference. So while I'm working on this, there's one thing I wanted to point out real quick. This is the new input shaft. This is the old input shaft. So you can see it's actually a bearing on the old one that did not come on the new one. So I need to make sure to actually swap that bearing onto the new shaft. I was able to get the bearing out using just a brass punch, a socket, and a mallet. So it's got a cap and it's got a bearing. All right, so I've got a bit of a problem. I was going to put this all back together and I needed to get this bearing as well as the cap for the bearing into the new input shaft. And I realized this bearing doesn't fit in there, not even close. I mean, it's supposed to be a press fit anyways, but can't even get this one close to started in here. Now I've tried to measure these in every other dimension I can find, and they're the same in every other dimension. It's just this bearing. And I don't think it's gonna be possible to get another bearing that's say lower profile or anything, nor would I wanna find one. And this input shaft came from eBay, so I can't really return it. And you can see it needs this bearing in order to hold the shaft, the main shaft in the transfer case. So it needs this bearing. I have no idea how that happened, but honestly, the way I'm gonna fix it is I'm just gonna throw this on my lathe and machine out that center a little bit. Probably not the best way to do this, but it'll mean that I can fix this without spending any more money and that's what I want. So. This is going on my lathe and I'm just going to turn the inside diameter to be a little bit bigger. Now, another issue I have is I don't actually have all the right tools and everything for this. Like I don't have an inside micrometer and I don't have a depth gauge. So I do have a digital readout on the lathe right here. So I'm just gonna use that digital readout and I'm going to copy the dimension from the input shaft of the bearing that works and I'm just gonna set the dimension on the new input shaft to be exactly that. So I won't need to do any measuring or anything. I'm just gonna chuck this one up in the lathe, figure out zero all my dials at the inside there, zero the depth to make sure I'm going to the right depth. And then I'm gonna throw this one in in the same orientation and just go until my dials has zero again. I need to throw the three draw back on it. Golden rule of lathe work is it's always the wrong chuck on the lathe. This is the old shaft that I have here, and all I did on the old shaft is I ran this tool in until I'm bottoming out. I zeroed out my X, and then I came in and just barely touched the side of it, and I zeroed out my gauge there, and I zeroed out my dial here. So all I need to do now is throw my other shaft in here and just machine it down until I reach the zero on the y-axis here. So it should be a relatively simple repair. So let me throw the new input shaft in there and let's start turning it down. Again, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is the best way to fix this, but I don't wanna to have to buy another $80 shaft. 
I don't even know how I managed to order the wrong one in the first place, so I don't know how I'd go about ordering the proper one the second time around, so I'm just gonna modify the one I have. Shouldn't be too complicated of a repair other than that. So let's see how it goes. YouTube. As you can see, we are in the kitchen today. The reason why is because I've decided that cars are kind of boring and I want to pursue my one true passion of starting a cooking show. Now, the real reason that we are in the kitchen today is because it is so cold outside that I could barely even see what I was doing well, with all my breath in front of my face. I've realized that that heater in there that was telling me it's been 32 degrees for the past two weeks it's only red 32, not 31, not 30, and it's probably been a whole lot colder than that, and yeah, it was difficult to get anything done, so now we're in the kitchen. Now, what were we were able to finish before the garage froze over, I was able to take this new input shaft that'll fit my transmission and machine out the center and press in that bearing in the center. So now I've got the bearing in here. I need to add some grease to it, but I can still feel the bearings roll and everything. So I was able to get a nice tight press fit in there. I was able to start the cap with a hammer and then I just finished it off with the press. All right, so for episode one of Cooking with Build Theory, we're gonna start with some dieting tips. First, if you make your kitchen smell like heavyweight gear oil, and then that sulfur will really kill your appetite, help you lose some weight. Now, the reason that we had to get this bearing into this input shaft is because this shaft, the input shaft here actually rides inside this shaft, and that bearing supports this big shaft here. Once I start putting the transfer case back together, I'll grease that up and make sure that all this fits together properly to make sure that that bearing sunk all the way in everywhere it needs to be and that there's no other issues. So let's begin putting the transfer case back together. All right, for episode two of Cooking with Build Theory, always make sure that you use the right ingredients. I checked the recipe that I was able to find online and for this transfer case, it specifies uh, Dextron 2 automatic transmission fluid. So that's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be coating all of the bearing surfaces and everything in that ATF before I assemble it. It'll be like the assembly lube. It doesn't ask for grease or anything, so I'm just gonna be using that ATF. Now, one last thing I wanna do before I put the whole thing together is I actually want to replace these plastic pads and all these shift forks. They don't look worn out to me or anything, but it was only like $4 worth of pads. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So these are really cheap little piece of junk plastic pieces. They're really thin and tiny. Kinda hate to see it. I'd really like to see these made out of brass. Um, not plastic like this. What happens is that these wear down and then it can't shift your transfer case all the way into gear and it gets stuck in neutral and then your truck can't even move anymore. You have to get it towed. So it's one of the only issues I ever hear about people having with these cases is these little plastic guys and I can see why now. Um, I actually didn't get all the right pieces. About half of what I ordered is right, so it's getting half old and half new, but again, these weren't worn out in the first place, so it should be fine. But if I ever do have an issue with these, I think next time, hopefully I'll have more time 
And I'd like to try and get these made out of brass or something so they don't have an issue down the road. It's really surprising to me that they're just that cheap plastic. It's a weird part to cheap out on, but yes, there you go. So it's time to put this uh, seal on. This seals the input bearing. And I checked the manual that I have and it just says to use a silicone gasket maker. So I'm just gonna use right stuff. I've had good results with this in the past. I've sealed up an entire transmission with this and it works fine. Um, obviously not sponsored, but this is just what I've used in the past and it works well for me. So I'm going to finish cleaning up this gasket surface here. You can use a razor blade and scrape it off or you can use a scraper like I have. Then I'm going to apply right stuff there, put that on, put some blue thread lock on the bolts, thread the bolts in and everything. I'm going to be pretty liberal with my use of thread lock on this build because it's a diesel engine and I'm just going to assume that it's going to shake everything to pieces and all my bolts are going to come undone. So most things I'm probably going to be using blue thread lock on. Here we go. Let's get this seal on and we can move on to the next part. Can anyone in the comments explain to me why my blue Loctite is in a red container and my red Loctite is in a blue container? Like what the hell Loctite? This one's the blue, this one's the red. The mind boggles. Okay, one small thing to keep in mind when putting this back together is that it does have a little passage here. That's for this hole here. I believe it's an oil hole. So there's four mounting bolts and then there's a little oil passage there. This needs to go where that passage is. So all I need to do is clean off the bolts, spew some gasket maker around this surface, bolts together with the torque wrench, should be good to go. Today on Cooking with Build Theory, we iced our cake. See, one issue with cooking in the Build Theory Kitchen is you get a lot of corgi hair in all your food. All right, I got the transfer case back together. And as you can see, it bolts onto the transmission. So I should have a working transfer case now. Let's test it. I got it in four wheel drive, so you should see that spin and that piece of tape on the output spin. So if I spin the input, spins there, spins there. Now let's shift it to neutral. Right there, I think should be neutral. Spinning it, no movement there or there. 
Right here is two wheel drive. Notice the flag on that shaft is spinning, but the front is not spinning. Right here, I believe is four. Yep. I think that's four high. There's your neutral. It's hard to shift this thing properly without the shift, the shifter connected, but there we go. That is transfer case done. It bolts up and everything. The only thing I need to do is add oil, but I'll do that later. As soon as I get oil in this thing, transfer case is done and now it fi fits on our transmission. So, all right, so we were able to finish the transfer case today, which is awesome. I was getting worried that it would turn into an even bigger ordeal once I realized that I that bearing on that input shaft was wrong, but luckily I was able to machine that out and now it's working. It's gonna be cool to have parts I machine myself in this build, it's kind of a cool thing. So I don't anticipate any issues from that because it's because it felt like a proper press fit when I put it in and the shaft being able to go into the bearing means that the fit wasn't too tight, the bearing still spun and everything, but it was tight enough that it was at least as tight as the stock one when it came out. So I don't anticipate any issues from that. I think that's transfer case done. Next, we still just need to get, do a similar thing to the transmission so we can get the transmission to bolt up to the engine. And then at that point, basically the drivetrain's done. Just have to get them to connect to our axles at that point, just drive shafts. But this video, we were able to get the transfer case working, even though we had to do some, uh, some custom machine work and everything, we were still able to get it done. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw here and like to see the rest of this Cummins Explorer build, then please like, subscribe, and stick around, and hopefully I'll see you next time.